How do you enter your rental income onto your bookkeeping when you have deductions on the payments that you receive? Let's have a look today. Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock. Let's sit down and have a chat. There are many ways you may receive your rental income depending how you work with your managing agent. Now for some, you may receive the whole of your rental income and then you may have to pay an invoice to your managing agent separately. Now that makes it very easy to deal with the transactions that come into your bank on your software because you can just put it straight to your rent or to your invoices depending how you've decided to manage it on your bookkeeping. However, there are occasions where your letting agent, your managing agent will deduct things out of your income and then pay you the net figure. Now, when that comes to your bookkeeping, how do you go about doing it? So today I'm going to show you a bit of a demo on how to deal with it on QuickBooks, but the principle is the same whatever software you're using. You will need to show the gross income. So let's just put some figures on it. Say, I receive a thousand pounds in rent for the period that they're paying me. And they're going to take their 10% and any bits of repairs and other things that they've incurred. So they're now going to deduct 200 pounds. I've now got 800 pounds that I'm going to receive into my bank account. So that's fine, but when I do my bookkeeping, I need to now show my thousand pounds of rental income, my hundred pounds of managing fees, and my hundred pounds of repairs, gas certificate, whatever it may be of expenses. And then that will balance out with the 800 I've actually physically received into my bank account. Now, if you're using a spreadsheet, not a problem, you can split that out quite easily. But when we go on to software, we need to do it in a specific way to make it all work. So let's jump into QuickBooks where I can show you on our demo company how it fits together. And then this works on other softwares in a similar way. You just need to find that split button and allocate things in an appropriate manner. So let's jump into the software. So as we can see, we are now in QuickBooks and you can see what our demo company has. It's nothing to do with property and apologies for that, but the general principle is going to be the same. So we're going to work through how you deal with those transactions where you've got money that has come in. So we're going to click on our banking tab and go to our banking section. And in going to the banking section, this is where I'm going to see all of my information coming through. Now, depends how you want to do this, but for me, I just tend to use my banking and post it directly to rental income rather than go in and put all the different in ex income that I'm expecting to receive and match it. If you are going to go in and match it all, then you may just need to do it in a slightly different way and let me know and we can have a separate video to show you how to go ahead and do that side of things. But if you are just going into your bank and going to put your rental income to the rental code, then this is exactly what you're going to need to be doing. So you go into one of your received money transactions and you can click on that. And this one it's going, do I want to match? No, I don't want to match on this. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm in the categorize tab. Now, the reason for being in the categorize tab is because then it will allow me to do the thing that I need to, which is the split. So here I can click on split and you'll be able to now see that I've got a screen which gives me the option to split out this amount. So on here, we've got a thousand pounds that has been received. Brilliant. Now I can select the location. Now this is not selected on properties or anything like that for the demo company. However, you can see here it's got different areas of the country. So if you've diff got different investment areas or different properties, you would be able to then look at clicking the relevant one. So I'm just gonna click Birmingham as where we are. Now, the next bit I want to do is then categorize it. Now, I'm just going to put this to sales, but you can have one called rental income or whatever you want, whether you want it split per property, whether you want it all going to the same place. It's kind of up to you how you specifically code that side of things. The description, I could put the month that it relates to. So we're in February. So we're going to put February rent. 
that is irrelevant for most properties so we're just going to ignore that one and the class side of things this would be where you could put the property specific or if you're going down to the rooms you'd be able to put the rooms categorization there so i'm just going to pick one so we've got one included but that would be maybe room one room two or if you're going birmingham as your location you might have five properties in birmingham then you've got one two three birmingham road or two three four derby road five six seven nottingham road you could put whatever property it is which then later on you'd be able to then get a report to see how that property is actually performing the final piece of the puzzle here is to enter the amount that you've actually received so we're going to pick 1200 as the amount that i've actually received as rent now the next part is we're going to select basically one that says managing now the benefit um of things like quickbooks is that you can add different accounts so if one isn't there you'd be able to add an account if one is there when you set it up you'll be able to put it all together so i'm just going to put that there for now so that then gives us our management or it could be repairs or renewal, whatever is the deduction that has been made now in here we can put either the month that it is management or we could put it's the gas certificate or it's i don't know a repair to some blinds whatever may be the expense it's related to now that won't appear in yours because unless you tick the box it won't appear on your quickbooks and then the class again we can put that that is specifically related to that room that property whatever you're using the class functionality for now the final piece is the amount and what we do is we put a minus 200 and then when we click the next box that then takes us down so we've got no difference we've now said we've got 1200 in 200 out a thousand pounds is what we've actually physically received into our bank account now you can put additional notes in the memo box if you've got any additional notes you want to add and if you've got a statement you can also use the add attachment button which will then allow you to add on this box statement whatever paperwork you may have normally i'm guessing these days digital format if you don't have anything you can attach a photo to the transaction so that you've got it all together and it makes perfect sense when you need to potentially look back at it in the future final then you can go apply and accept and that will now save the transaction and it's no longer there for you to do and it's just literally a matter of going down all your transactions of money coming in to then show you how it fits together check out the video on classes and locations and how you can use them in your bookkeeping to make the data talk talk your language show you what's happening on the channel if you have any comments or questions on how to do this then please do leave a comment i really like you to make sure that you are 100 percent confident in how to deal with these types of transactions Hopefully today you've discovered how to deal with those transactions on your bank feed to split out the transaction between your income and your expenses. If there are any questions or comments, please do leave them below. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video and share with anyone else who needs to know how to deal with this type of transaction. Let's make tax less taxing.